Ready? Yep. Three, two, one, and go. All right, so this is Digimon World, any percent. Um, so first thing to notice, I'm playing in Japanese. Uh, this is only a recent change. Uh, since my last run I did was PAX uh, in November last year for a marathon, uh, I ran on English using Bergeron. Uh, this runs a little bit different. We run with Bakemon now, because Bakemon you can get a lot faster than Bergeron since you don't have to train it all for him. You just um, do a Death Digivolution, which is usually about a 10% chance. But you'll find that this run is completely RNG manipulated for like 30 minutes. So yeah, it's, it's kind of like a really, it's got a lot of pressure this run. <laughs> if I make like any kind of movement mistakes or anything like that, I kind of have to like reset. <laughs> There's a lot of work that goes into figuring out the right RNG manipulation. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so like I've, I've over the last uh, well, like month, I guess, um, I've been routing the 100 PP category for this game. So coming back to any percent to do some practice is kind of like a bit, a bit of a mess, honestly. But we'll, we'll be fine. I'll get first try slots and it'll be fine. So yeah, uh, what I mean by slots is it's actually like um, the nine slots you do at the very beginning of the run, which are RNG manipulated. You get uh, three golden poops in a row. Um, and it gives you 10 times your stat points uh, each time you do it. So you end up starting the run with 640 offense and 370 speed, which is over m halfway to max stats. So yeah, it's pretty fast. Yeah, so yeah. I'm gonna call like real serious time for this. I wanna get this first try. So everything I'm doing right now is set up in between the slots as well. Yes, it just yes. sets up the RNG to be the right side uh, value to get this. so far. <laughs> it's gone good. <sighs> so yeah, when that happens, I've got to save. That's just after the intro and I have to go back and try again. So hopefully this doesn't happen too many times because as you can imagine, it takes a bit of time to get back to the game. So I guess I'll explain a little bit how that all works. Um, so yeah, like when you do a praise or a skull to your Digimon, it advances the RNG by two values. Um, feeding, I think does three or two. So I can't exactly remember the exact amount for that. Um, and then you've got feeding, uh, trying to feed an item and having it fail actually uh, advances it by four if you let him catch up to you. So like. Your Digimon will also advance RNG seed by one if you walk into him and have him stop moving. Um, it's it's really really bizarre how the RNG works in this game. Not a lot of games do things like this. <laughs> yes. So we're gonna try again. Unfortunately, we have to start with the first one again. So. Yes, 
Okay, mate, my input on that second reel just then, so I'm lucky I got that. Not too bad. I'll take that. Alright, we can bring out the memes. Oh, okay, yeah, now we can start the memes. The pressure's off. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, go for it, go for it. So we have a $10.70 donation from Snang Master. Nice to see Raikou taking a break from footy to run some Digimon World. Put this towards the curling mini game. And let's see some quick strikes. Nice, nice. Shout out to Brad. A local friend from Perth. Good old Western Australia. <laughs> Most of back me up. <laughs> Western Australia doesn't exist. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> it's a myth. Alright. That was the Ogamon fight. Um, same every run. So, like, as I, as I mentioned, this run is RNG manipulated. So, everything that's in that I'm doing is. It all, it all makes sense, trust me. So doing things like this, walking into my Digimon, having it stop moving, advances the RNG by one each time. So I'm setting up the Kunam on fire now. Um, I'm gonna take necessary damage during the fight so that Ogamon ends up weakened. I guess you could kind of consider this a sort of like uh, animal abuse territory. I kind of like really pick on him. Um, I kind of forcibly get him killed. So, I mean, kind of a bad trainer, but it's, it's all to make him strong, don't worry. So yeah, come let's Kunamon here. I'm gonna do a setup here, which is gonna put me in the same position every time. So pause, change my direction, and then down right, and then unpause, and now I'm in the right position. So I'm gonna feed the meat to Kunamon. Wait for him to get into a standard position, so it's like his pixel alignment is exactly the same every time, and that will give you the same consistent fight. Now, Kunamon, you feed him, you give him a piece of meat, and he's like, yeah, let's fight. So um, you give him some food, and he looks pretty hungry, and then he decides to take it out on you, so whatever. Um, so at the end of this fight, I have 225 health. Um, this puts me in range for the next fight I do to die one hit, and then once I die, I'll end up going sent, being sent back to Digimon's house, which is like where the room that I was talking to, the old man with the stick. Um, and then I will start Digivolving into Barkemon, and that will be the Digimon I stick with for the rest of the run. And the best part about this run is that after I've done all those slots, there's no more training. There's nothing left. Um, all I have to do to advance time is rest a couple of hours. Um, and that puts me into the same um, time slot so I can do certain timed events that just rely on uh, clock-based stuff. I, it's just, some of those timed events are kind of a pain, but they need to be done. Um, so the ultimate goal of this run uh, is to get 50 prosperity points for the city. Um, each Digimon you recruit has a prosperity value depending on their level of evolution. So you got rookies at a one point, you got champions at a two, and you got ultimates at a three. Um, so we just recruit, a, you know, the, the amount of Digimon we need to recruit that 50. There is a hundred prosperity points worth of value in, like, worth of points in this game that you can get. Um, and that's what that's like the other category of this run. That's about double the length. Um, also full of a lot of RNG manipulation. So, like, there's still a lot of pressure at the moment, um, because if I do an accidental catch-up to my Digimon, I get stuck in a wall and he stops moving near me, that's it. I either have to uh, correct my RNG, like, say if I need to do a catch-up at some point, I don't do a catch-up, I cut, I cut that catch-up out and then it's back on track. But if I have to be on the same RNG for, like, a ho like hold on to it, I will potentially lose it. Yeah, can I make a can I make a point here? 
I love your suit, Zumi. It's a good suit. Yeah, it's a really fancy suit. I appreciate it. Just don't, just don't focus. Yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> yeah, let's not focus on what's on screen. Just focus on Zumi's suit. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I died. Rip. So yeah, as I was saying, like yeah, um, you potentially die in that fight. Take one hit. It's a lot faster than trying to find a. Because you have to like trial and error through the run to get a manipulation that gives you Bakemon. So he's digivolving now. So like killing a Digimon turns him into, you guessed it, a ghost. It's pretty accurate. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So um, with the Japanese version of this game, when uh, you learn an ability or um, a Digimon drops like a chip or anything like that, the text at the bottom of the stats screen is actually instant in Japanese rather than scrolling across letter by letter in English. Um, there is a couple of like uh, non like, like things that aren't beneficial to the run in Japanese as well, but those things don't outweigh the time save you get from that instant text. Um, one of the main things is your Digimon will poot twice as much. I I don't know why that's a thing, but it is. Um, English version does it every eight hours on the clock and Japanese does it every four. Now that actually is beneficial as well as a problem because you know, the, the poops take time, but it's beneficial in a way that you will actually have different RNG and you can get good RNG manipulation using the RNG that changes based on the poop. There is a way to actually get exactly the RNG on English, but it obviously will take the same number of advances that you get from a poop, so it's a bit, a bit slower. Um, but another thing as well is the Ogamon that you fight in at the start of the run actually has more health in Japanese as well, so he takes longer to kill. So that advances the RNG by like one power, like. Uh, uh, I'm actually not exactly sure the same amount, but it's a lot. And getting that same RNG on English is pretty much impossible. But yeah, what I've just done there is um, I manipulated an ability. Um, so now I have the ability called Spinning Shot, and I just equipped it to Bakemon. Uh, spinning Shot is useful in this run for about three fights. Uh, one being uh, manipulation for the ability Final Justice, which does the highest DPS in the game. I'm gonna get from this mansion right now. So I'm gonna recruit um, my doppelganger. Oh yeah, I'm just saying yes, yes, no to him, by the way. <laughs> um, he, like, just spouts nonsense and you can never understand him but if you know the input then you just go yes yes no and move on so oh yeah go for it yeah yeah so we have a five dollar donation from Rocket Pineapple. Hello from downstairs. Good luck on the Digimon world. Let's get the killing mini game met. So close to two thousand guys. Let's meet at this run. And we also have a fifty three dollar and fifty cent donation from a couple of people. One of them's K Hearts. Uh, good luck on the run, Raikou. May the RNG be in your favor. Donation goes to Raikou's choice. Oh, um. I'll have to look for the incentives. Are you able to remind me afterwards? Cool, thanks. Okay, so what I'm doing now is that's the Thunder Justice fight. Okay, so one thing to note is the Digimon has to use the ability before you can learn it. So they have to use it at least once and then you got the chance to learn it at the end of the fight. Um, he didn't really use it though in that, in that fight. The fight actually, he gets cancelled right at the second he starts doing the animation. So um, yeah, that's, it's a really, really good manipulation to um, get that ability take no damage and well you take a little bit of damage from electric cloud but it's not anything that's a bother and yeah uh, he doesn't actually get to use the ability which actually one shots you if it hits you <laughs> so really really good manipulation so now I've got the strongest basically the strongest move in the game 
has really high MP usage as well, so you need a lot of MP chips or M MP recoveries. Okay, that's okay. That Sukomon's kind of a kind of a pain. Um, he can like get he can stand right behind you, and then it's basically you have to weigh the weight for him, or if he's like a couple of pixels away, which is what he was just then. Luckily enough, um, I was able to get around him. But if I get into that counter, runs over. So I would have been mercy killed like right then and there. So a lot of pressure with this run until I get uh, past Piximon. That's pretty much where like the cutoff point is for like the stress levels. <laughs> and then it's just have some fun with it. All right, so I need to focus on this. This is like a trick. Um, I'll explain a bit when I get it. One, two, three. Cool, okay, that should be it. So normally um, there's, a tr there's like a, a wall, an invisible wall on that bridge. Uh, you can't cross until you talk to another Digimon in the city. Uh, there is actually like a thin pixel um, wide gap that you can actually clip through if you position yourself correctly. And then you can go into this area earlier than you should be able to. So yeah, um, it's got like a prosperity point requirement to be able to trigger the bridge. So you, can't, you have to come back here later uh, since you can't um, progress the game without triggering the bridge at least once. You just go there and then you autopilot back to the town. So next recruitment is a uh, pretty, pretty uh, tedious one in all honesty. Uh, if you've ever played this game as a kid, you'll probably remember this is like a pretty annoying task. So what you're doing is you're working retail. So you're um, a shopkeeper and you're selling things to Digimon that are coming in and they're pretty picky about the price. So what this has done is it's had to be RNG manipulated so we can um, get the exact customers we want. We want a certain amount and we also want to make a certain amount of money too. So I'm going to focus here a little bit so I don't do the wrong inputs. So I'm raising or offering normal price or lowering the price to make these customers happy. So 15, he, uh, that customer just bought a, a bit of medicine for 1500 bits. So it's actually um, the highest you can get for that particular item. Um, and as a matter of fact, that uh, certain the Weedmon, it's called, that's the Digimon. Um, if he buys that medicine, it's like Weedmon buying medicine, haha. Uh, <laughs> he, um, he has a 3% chance to actually buy it at full price. So that's a pretty lucky manipulation to have. So there's 14 customers in the shop. That's a pretty good shop to get because like when the customer leaves, the next customer that's in the list is skipped. So you get one less customer each time a customer leaves. So it saves a bit of time to get the lowest amount. I think the lowest you can get is like 13 or 12. So 14 is a really good um, manipulation to have. I just want to point out that Raikou is a machine for running all these RNG, like <laughs> major RNG games. Oh man. I don't know why I do. <laughs> I made, uh, made some bad life decisions. Alright, cool. I didn't mess that up. So yeah, you have to raise cancel the price for that. So you raise it and then you cancel it and you do that four times to get it in a certain price that you'll take. Um, I thought I was on the customer before it because there's another Gaburumon before that one that buys a medicine as well for the exact same value so I got a bit confused which one was which so I took a gamble and luckily I got it right. <laughs> it's just a few more customers here and then we're out of the shop. Yeah right, RNG manipulate your customers, get the best sale points, keep your job. <laughs> So there's just uh, three more customers. Uh, actually, I want to point out that RNG manipulating this section was like one of the most tedious tasks I've ever had to do. Now, <laughs> it is so free to do now thanks to a tool that someone by the name of Sid Montage um, had made. The tool actually, you put in the RNG value for the current seed you're on, you put it into a tool and it will generate the exact amount of raise cancels and inputs you have to do to RNG manipulate the best shop. And it is a godsend. It makes routing this game free. 
So that saved me a lot of time doing 100 PP because in, in the 100 PP category, you also have to do that shop. So we do the same kind of RNG manipulation for it as well. So you take it to the toilet first, uh, first and only time in the run, I think. Yeah, yeah, I don't think you take it to the toilet at all anymore. He just kind of goes where he wants. So from here, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to fight Bergeron. Uh, Bergeron's in a nest uh, just a few screens away. Uh, you fight Bergeron and it unlocks a fly path, so you can just fly to certain locations. Very, very useful to have. Pretty much one of the reasons we actually go to this place earlier than we when we sh than we should be able to. So we try to get this prosperity points, which is two, and then also have that fly path unlocked. So this fight is actually, us like, usually it's pretty hard, but because we have Thunder Justice, which you'll see how much damage it does, and also one of its really, really good perks as well is that it stuns. So it will stun Bergeron on the second hit, and then Bergeron can't do anything for like a good, I think it's 10 seconds? I actually never noticed <laughs> how long the stun lasts. I just, whenever I see a stun, I get, I get excited and I don't worry about anything else. So, um, calling these commands in the middle of the fight actually manipulates the RNG as well, advances by one, changes a few things, so I'm going to call attack here, then I'm going to sort my inventory so things are in a good spot, and then I'm going to feed this um, small recovery at the end to advance the RNG by 1,320. And that's the fight for Bergeron. So as you can see, Thunder Justice is like insane. It's such a good move to have. So it saves a lot of time in the run. So the next part coming up is probably the last thing I have to worry about in terms of RNG manipulation. If I can get past this, I'm pretty pretty set. So we'll see how we go. Oh yeah, but first I gotta do shopping as well. Forgot about that. So we're gonna sell a few items we picked up, ones we don't need, and then we're gonna use those uh, use those bits to actually buy some healing items so we can um, yeah get through everything and not like die straight away. So I'm gonna buy 19. This is the most unoptimal shopping ever because like I never got a chance to actually um, sort this out and have it uh, my inventory done in a good way, so I kind of just winging it now. Yeah, go for it, yeah. So we have a $11.93 donation from Neo53 who says 2,000 hype. Yes, we just reached $2,000 for ASM 2017 so Hell far. Yeah, that's good. Well done, yeah, <laughs> that's great. Yeah, it's a slot, yeah. <laughs> Hey, hey, a second try, let's not go nuts. <laughs> Would have preferred first try, but uh, you know, I'll take what I can get for this this marathon run. It's such a bad marathon run. Don't ever run this for a marathon, I'm telling you now. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm putting myself in a specific position here. Um, I'm then gonna force feed him um, MP floppy so he has good MP. And then I'm gonna hold right. What's gonna happen is he's gonna jiggle in the wall a little bit and he's gonna walk out the screen. What's happening is while the pixels or those um, particle effects are happening on around Bakemon, that's advancing the RNG. And what I'm doing when I enter the loading zone is I'm cutting off the RNG advance at a certain point. And that RNG advance is giving me Pixemon, which is a 3% chance to spawn in the screen. So I'm making that happen. Let's try to my inventory here a bit. So I'm timing my feeds here so I can hold the RNG manipulation for this fight. So see, I'm stunning PC mod repeatedly, which is just completely OP. Yeah, cool, good. All right, so um, that's pretty much the last thing I have to worry about. I'm pretty s set on this now. Um, there's one more thing, I guess, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. So, Piximon. Normally, if you ever played this game casually, you'll find that Piximon was probably one of the hardest fights in the game. Uh, but in this, we, you know, 
kind of just chase it. <laughs> so yeah, all those stuns that happened to pick him on there were all RNG manipulated, so it's like, uh, I can't remember the exact percentage. Sid, if you're in chat, can you like, give everyone a heads up with how much percentage that is? Thanks, bud. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool, thanks. So I'm also, uh, of course, part of RNG manipulation is this part as well. Um, so normally you're meant to take like a certain path around these uh, walls and go through it like a, a puzzle. But if you tank the damage and hold up, you can actually keep your RNG uh, the same. Because if you go through these zigzag paths, the RNG changes rapidly and it's almost impossible to keep control of it without task level movement. So yeah, if you just hold up, you're obviously not going to change your direction at all. And that means you can stay on the same path the entire time. So normally that was actually something we couldn't RNG manipulate past and when we got to that point it was like yeah we're just gonna random do the run uh, random from there onwards but yeah since that was found um, we can just hold up and go for it. So if I was on like a, um, if I was going for like I guess I guess you could say it world record strats, world record strats. Um, I would sleep on the screen with Centaurum on, but uh, yeah, just to play safe here, I'm going to sleep here and then uh, wait the time I need to to actually do Giramon, which is one of the timed events. Sleeping earlier obviously gives me more um, time to advance longer on the clock, uh, giving me, you know, get, getting me there right when I can enter. But if I like messed up anything before that, um, I'd probably be late and then I'd have to train a full day to get back to the time to actually enter um, the area with gear on. So that, all that happens like uh, much later on. So it's just you do all these things in between that and it's better to just sleep later so that way you have some more time to play with. Because once you sleep, you wake up at the same time every time, no matter how late you sleep. So as I said um, earlier, like we, we skipped the trigger for the bridge. I'm now going to go to the trigger and actually activate it this time. Because uh, you can't actually talk to Euromon who triggers the Ogamon event without crossing the bridge at least once. So you walk on it, he's like, hey look, it's a invisible bridge. Oh look, I can actually walk on it. There we go. So yeah, uh, manipulate that first try feed. Uh, your Digimon can sometimes reject your feed in this game, um, in which case you have to worry about your discipline level, which is the bottom bar um, on the bottom right. And that actually gets to be a big problem at some stages because like you want to obviously optimize and save as much time as you can, but he'll just decide to reject every feed you give him at the end of the game and you're on world record pace and it's over and you know, it all happens too fast. So this is the first Ogamon fight. Um, if anything like goes wrong with RNG manipulation here, it's not a big deal. I can still continue to run and do it like random, but I'm hoping to hold manipulation for the next two fights and then manipulation is impossible because I'm entering a area called Friesland. Um, and it's kind of like a bit of forest uh, with Centaurimon, like I was saying, like in certain spots in that area, the RNG would advance too fast to hold on to the manipulation. Uh, same thing with Freeze Lane, except the whole area is like that because of the snow. The snow particle effects actually um, advance the RNG rapidly while you're in the area. So holding onto it requires task level movement. So I'll get it. This will cause a triple hit here. That's so nice. <laughs> Move this down. I'm gonna time this feed as well to so when I uh, like just after I hit Ogamon. Okay, good. Open my inventory again and plan uh, prepare to feed these two um, recoveries. Alright, cool. So I'm holding on to manipulation still. Uh, the next fight is where it actually um, is kind of iffy if I'm actually gonna um, hold on to manipulation past that point because. There's a, a specific position you need to stop in. Uh, if you don't stop in that correct position, like on the first go, then you get a different fight. 
So you have to be pixel perfect stop. It's a 20 f. Uh, the game runs it like logically. It runs at 20 fps. So um, it's not too much of a struggle to hit that pixel, but it's still uh, not entirely easy. Fortunately, as I said, it's not a big deal if I miss it. It just means I'll have a slow Ogremon fight, which is annoying anyway. <laughs> So as we just beat our Ogamon a moment ago, he ran off to his fortress, which we're going back to beat him up again. Not for the last time either. <laughs> Alright, cool. That's a kind of hard dodge. I'm so glad he didn't touch me because it was pretty close actually. I waited too long. So this is Fridge Strats. You get into a certain position, you can just walk straight through the Ogamon, which are actually supposed to be a boss fight. When you trigger them, they're a boss fight and you can't run from them. So the game intended for you to actually fight them. Oh cool, I got it. <laughs> Alright, I stopped in the right pixel. So now this fight's manipulated. So yeah, if I stop like one pixel earlier, I can get a different fight, which still works. Um, if I stopped two pixels earlier, I couldn't hold on to an RNG manipulation for this fight and it's over. Well, not. It's a slower fight. Yeah, it's good. So he gets away again. Um, we fight him one more time. Uh, normally, you'd fight him four times in this game, but because of... I'm going to try and feed these here. Um, normally, he would... You'd fight him four times, you'd fight him again in the drill tunnel, but because we don't visit the drill tunnel in this run, we don't actually recruit him. Uh, but fighting him the third time actually recruits another Digimon, so we just take that and go with it. Oh cool, one free feed, that's good. Normally you manipulate those feeds, but I kind of botched it and fed, uh, fed two items at the end for safety. If you only feed one and that's it, then you can uh, have both those feeds be first try, which will save a lot of time. So what I'm doing here is called Gaburumon Skip, which doesn't actually skip him, but it saves a bit of time. So one, two, and then you clip through a very thin, pix thin line of pixels, much like the invisible bridge, because um, you usually can't get past him. So we trigger Shellmon up here, who's stuck on top of the elevator we just rode up. Um, so he's like complaining that he's stuck on top of the elevator. We're like, oh crap, we'll you know, go help you out. Uh, so we go back to the Gaburimon. Uh, we don't actually fight him though, we run. And when you run, it actually sends you all the way back to the elevator, so it's like a quick warp. <laughs> So now we're done with spinning shot. I'm gonna switch to fun justice for the rest of the run. So now we brought down the elevator. Shelmon's waiting uh, in the spot we were just at. So I'm gonna fly to the Great Canyon again, which is where Ogamon is. Or was. <laughs> it's 
the shaman's just sitting here now, gonna finish conversation. Shaman's gonna go to the city, and there's shaman recruited. So this is mostly the reason we do Ogamon 1, 2, and 3. Even though like we don't recruit Ogamon, we recruit Shelmon and Wamon as well. So those are four prosperity points just for doing those fights. So now I'm heading to Garurumon, uh, the first fight of Garurumon. You fight Garurumon twice in this run. Uh, the first time you have control of like calling commands and feeding items. The second time you actually don't. Um, it's a bit of a risky fight, honestly, because if he just decides that, oh, yep, gonna do um, Ice Statue, which is an ability that has a chance to stun. He does the stun, you have to sit there and wait out the stun and hope that he doesn't constantly do it and kill you. Uh, he can actually kill you and it really, really sucks. So, fingers crossed that doesn't happen here. I don't think it's too much of a problem because I can just go back and try again. So, not a big issue. Also, I didn't get the um, devil mushroom, which like, there's like a digi mushroom that sits there right in the spot. And if you grab it, there's a chance that you'll just get into an encounter with the other, uh, with the ice devimons. So, I believe the digi mushroom works for them. Okay, so there's ice statue. <laughs> Kind of a. Oh, I've got no MP. I don't know. Oh no, I died. <laughs> okay. All right, that's bad. Uh, should be able to go back and do it again. I should have had the medium recovery. I was trying to hold off using that for um Giramon, but yeah, that's not good. Good thing I slept later than I usually do in this run. Because <laughs> if I had done it on like the um, riskier strats, I would definitely have to train a full day. So what I lose? Ugh, all right. <laughs> so I lost all my recoveries, which is not good. So let's go buy another 19 or something. So this doesn't usually happen, so this is very, very much improvisation at this stage. So if we've got any donations, you can read those. <laughs> Please. <laughs> so we have our $40 donation from Liquid Wi-Fi. Hey, paying my debt for, from Hit and Run put this towards Paiku's choice. Oh, yay. I'll let him know. All right, so his happiness level is really bad as well. This is a train wreck. I have just enough money to actually get across as well. Lucky. Ah, oh, I should have gotten a freeze lane actually because now I had it unlocked, but it was 2,000. All right, that's fine. We'll make do. I'm most likely not going to make the timing now though. So that's, oh no, actually, no, I meant to rest an hour. I should be fine. So you usually get to the point where you have to do Greymon and then you rest an hour and that push you at the time you need to be. So if I don't rest the hour, I should be still good. I hope. Never really had this happen before, to be honest. Still no devil mushroom, that's good. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, I'm gonna make sure I actually, if I need to use that medium recovery, that was a really bad guru in one fight though as well. So, kind of bad luck, honestly, as well, as my own error. You're killing me. <laughs> You're seriously killing me. You seriously stun me right now. Ah, oh, yeah, there we go. Cool. That works. So I don't think I lost anything else important. From what I can see in my inventory, I think everything else is there. 
That's good. So yeah, Guruma walks away and he comes back later. Uh, if you fight him on the first hour he shows up, um, he'll be weakened. In which case, actually, no, I'm not going to feed that right now. If I try to feed that right now, I'll be wasting time on the clock, which I desperately need right now. But yeah, like, Gurumon comes back, and if you fight him earlier, he only takes two hits to kill instead of three. Okay. There's the devil mushroom. <laughs> So I take it the curling incentive got me, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Okay. So, um, I was considering doing it there, but I probably shouldn't for the sake of making it to Giramon still, but I'll do it after the run ends and then I'll load my save and go do it. Also, that means if I actually lose it, it doesn't... <laughs> mean the end of the run. <laughs> so we take Lamon across to Ogamon 3. Um, Ogamon 3 is kind of a... It can be a dangerous fight. It depends what um, Waru Siegemon does, because there's actually like three opponents in this. There's a Gabumon, a Ogamon, and Waru Siegemon. And Waru Siegemon has a lot of AoE, high damage attacks that are kind of annoying, so... So there's two Gavin 1 right now, and he gets rid of one, and then Waru Siege 1 comes in. Mm, okay. 41. I'm still going to be estimate by heaps, though. <laughs> it's just that much faster now than when I said that. Okay. <laughs> All right, cool. I did some damage. Awesome. Did some more damage. So like, uh, yeah, I'm not, one of the really big things that makes Ogremon such pain is that he blocks like so many of your attacks. That's a really good move to actually for him to use because AOE hits them as well. <laughs> so he's basically beating up his own partners. Oh, of course, attacking the dead corpse. Don't flatten me, don't flatten me. Okay, good. So yeah, um, that Aurora Freeze ability has a chance to flatten. Okay, he's done me great. I'm just trying to make sure I don't die now. Ah, uh, it's what do you think? No, it's not. I've just wasted it. Alright, cool. I guess. <laughs> Yeah, Liquid Buddy, you got more donations over there? <laughs> okay, no worries. It's okay, I'm happy they met the curling incentive, so we're all good. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, oh yeah, I'll join the city. Haha, <laughs> not. And he gets his submarine, he plug it, swims away. It's like, what an asshole. <laughs> yeah, I got bruised good. <laughs> the funny thing is, I just never go back from it. He's just gone for good. RIP, Ogamon. Yeah. He's just a bully. Alright, so what's the time at right now? Ah, oh, yeah, that's. Uh, yeah, that should be okay, I think. Ooh. Maybe not, actually. Um. Can I do Ogremon later? Oh, sorry, not Ogremon. Greymon later? I think I should. Mm. I'll risk it. Let's go. <laughs> I'm probably not going to make it. In which case, I'll have to train a day. I don't think of any. Ah, uh, I probably could have. 
I'm bad at improvisation, so the route's kind of all messed up now. There's no way. Yeah, there's no way. Training time. I absolutely can't make that. I have to do an extra day. So I'll just like, you know, spam some offense here or something for a bit. So yeah, this is regular training. It's like you shouldn't have seen this at all. So kind of a bummer, but we'll make do. Yeah, dying to Gurumon completely ruined the run. Might not sleep yet. One more hour, I think. So, my, um, currently my biggest concern, which... Oh, actually, you know what? It might not be so bad. I was worried about um, his happiness level at the moment being so bad. Um, but I think when I do... Because uh, I'm going to reset the console at some stage. Uh, going to go into Digimon's house, save the game, reset the console to reset the RNG. Uh, to manipulate in this game, you need to have over the neutral part of happiness. So you need to have the happy smiley face in the bottom right of the um, screen. If you don't have that, then... The RNG advances every 10 seconds, unless you have a status effect above your head. Oh, but Digimon has a status effect above his head. And at the point I do that manipulation, he's tired. The other concern I've got is that his discipline's low. And he needs to take a first try feed, which if he doesn't have the correct level of discipline, he rejects it. And that's run over. So I'm hoping I can make that. Oh my god. I went one too far. Are you serious? Alright, this is really, really bad now. I think this might be a mercy kill. So how far behind it? Uh, how far behind on runs are we at the moment? Are we on time or are we behind? Oh, damn. Okay. <laughs> Just hoping we could bring the marathon back in track with this now. Oh, the other bad thing is I feel like I'm going to actually have an issue where... So, okay, so if you did your one post on the ground 16 times in this run, he'll turn into Sukumon. And I have a feeling that's going to happen. This is like a... I think this is a dead run. This is so not going to work, <laughs> but we'll see what we can do. I'll try and bring, I'll try and carry this as long as I can. Um, the best part is I can do curling at any point, so the incentive's still going to be done. It's just, I'm not too sure about the run itself at this stage.
I'm gonna try and race some discipline here. So that way, um, if I if I do that, there's a I can chance I can stop Buckingham from losing stats. When you got low uh, low happiness and low discipline, your Digimon will eventually get a butterfly effect above his head, and you'll start losing two percent of stats every tick on the clock, or every ten seconds or something. Like it's a really arbitrary amount, but yeah, yeah, you'll lose a certain amount of your stats. If we lose stats, it's like really really bad because we only just have enough or we have just enough to do enough damage to beat the final boss So uh, yeah, I'm at the correct time now and the guards aren't there. This is what we're waiting for. Normally there's two guard drum on blocking this entrance, but if you go at their shift change, they're not there and you can just walk in. And then they, for some reason, never show up again after that. So I think they kind of just gave up because you're already past them, so just or whatever. I think I may have lost an MP chip. I need to actually check my inventory during this fight and see if I've got it. If I've lost it, then I have to make a detour and go get some more. So Giramon's kind of a pain. Uh, the amount of various I have at the moment is also a worry. So, because uh, I have to use a protection to make sure I don't get any status effects. If he hits me with one as well, while I'm throwing the protection, it doesn't actually take effect um, until I get rid of the um, status effect I have on me, which means I have to use a various to cure it. Um, and I only have one at the moment, which I was meant to hope to hold on to until the end of the run, but... Don't... Okay, good. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, of course that'd be a good fight. <laughs> a bit late now. I'm going to pick up this defense chip, which I normally wouldn't, but lack of money, lack of everything. So. Uh, do I want to get these ones? Yeah, I might as well. Just need one. So I'm hoping like all the feeds from this point fail. If the, all the feeds fail, I can then scold him and that will give a positive scold because after you try to feed something to your Digimon and he rejects it, you can then scold him to say, hey, take the damn thing. Um, and that actually raises his discipline quite a bit and I need to have as much as I can get at this stage. So there's a problem in the sewer at the moment. We're going to go there and um, clean it up. It's just Numemon. The poop slug Digimon, he's just sitting in the sewer, being annoying. Now, he's a one-shot fight, so I should be able to hit him one shot, but for some reason, like, sometimes my Digimon won't attack, and that gives him a chance to use uh, Ultimate Poop Hell as the ability, that's what it's called. Um, he will use that, and it will just uh, have, it has, like, a really, really high chance of flatten, and if that happens, I mean, that's a very secure, and it's just a massive pain. Ah, we're good. Yeah, so I've got two MP chips and an HP chip I can sell. That's fine. I might actually be able to finish this, actually, which will be fine. So we'll just do first try Siege 1 and we'll be fine here, guys. Yeah, yeah. First try Siege 1. <laughs> ever? Yeah, ever. Oh, great. Yeah, that's a nice consistency rate. So I'll explain a bit more about Cedron when we get there. We're not far off from him. Um, but basically, it's a 20% chance that he'll buy the line. Uh, and yeah, he can just pass by for like 12, 15 attempts if he wants to. Just don't keep passing by the bait. <laughs> 
such recruiting a Lechmon, which is like pretty easy recruit, but you just touch him, get zapped three times, and he's like, oh, hey, you're pretty strong, I'm gonna go to the city. It's like, okay. <laughs> See ya. So going to Trash Mountain just to um, actually get a fishing rod so we can fit a fish for Seedramon and also recruit Supermon, which you just talk to him. He doesn't actually give you like any recruitment text or anything like that. He just kind of says, yeah, yeah, I'll come check out the city sometimes, and that counts as a recruitment. Um, all the filth Digimon in this game, so Nanimon, uh, Sukumon, and Numamon, are they like, they're champion level technically, but they're actually only one prosperity point worth instead of two because they're just filth Digimon. Nobody wants them, so they lowered their points value. <laughs> I don't want him to take any feeds from this point onwards so I can raise the discipline as much as I can. I'd probably do that on the last feed before I do the next manipulation. Um, I'll probably actually like feed, fail, scold, walk away from him and then try and feed again to have it failed a second time. Um, just for the sake of having my discipline raised so I don't have any issues with the manipulations afterwards. So doing the last shopping... Uh, which this should have been the second one, but of course for the diet I had to go buy more recoveries. Uh, whoops. Uh, so we want three protections. Do have three various as well. Buy 41. And the rest on medium recoveries. Cool, we're good. Okay, so I got um, about uh, over 25% discipline, which is actually enough to accept the feed already, so we're back on track. So we rest here four times. We need to talk to Centaurimon at some stage, so Unimon happens. Uh, so... What we uh, end up doing instead is we come here and rest four times so we can bring our time to Seedramon. Uh, Cause Seedramon's actually on a specific time in the clock every day. Twice a day actually. So we just do this until we get there. So there's a couple of things we have to do before Seedramon. Uh, we have to do Ninjamon, which is a can be kind of a pain, uh, especially when you're on like world record pace, he can kind of cost you about 15 to 20 seconds if he feels like it. But other than that, he's easy. So I gotta do Ninjamon, then I gotta go visit Coelomon the second time. I did Coelomon like at the start of the run to uh, fix the bridge. So go recruit Coelomon on the second visit. Then go do Palmon, which is also a kind of a pain of fight. He can just like block attacks and all that stuff and be really annoying about it. Okay, confusion, that's not good. Oh cool, I actually got an attack off before it ran out. Nice. Honestly, not a bad Ninjamon fight, even with the confusion. I didn't like using the various, but I had a spare one, so all good. Okay, so for Seedramon, um, I decided that I would donate $5 for every time he passes by the bait. So we can, if it goes really badly, <laughs> I could be out of pocket for quite a bit, but we'll see how we go. It should be fine. So Buckamon's tired at the moment. We're actually going to keep it that way for a long time. Um, once we've done uh, the 
Metal Mammon and Mammon manipulations. We then let him sleep after those, and then we have the time for Guru and 1-2 straight after. So we do that. Okay, yeah. If someone does that, he can actually cancel. <laughs> okay. Be a freak. Alright, good. Good boy. Proud of you. Alright, here comes Seedramon. So, Seedramon is basically the reason uh, runs don't ever finish for this game. <laughs> They're just, uh, like, at the current level, the best time is at. It's so necessary for it to be first try, and if it isn't, then you're pretty much resetting. Uh, the current best time for this game is a 109.49 by me, uh, and it has a third try Seedramon in it, but everything else in the run was like really, really good. So to get that time with a third try Seedramon is insane because it's actually 20 seconds every time he passes by. So we'll see what happens. All right, so well, that's one, so $5. <laughs> so we're just fishing now. Anyone read any donations while we're at it? We have a ten dollar donation from Nathan Tar, who says, "Yo, good luck, good luck, good luck, good luck, good luck, Raku. Congrats on getting class second try. Bubble me out. See you tomorrow." Cool. Oh, I'll do ten dollars. I'll do ten dollars. Fine. Yeah. So second try, Seed Run's pretty good, actually. <laughs> I would take that in an actual good run. <laughs> of course, I get it in this run. Yeah. Thanks, Seed Run. No worries. It's, 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 it's just an insult now. <laughs> We've got a ten dollar donation from Raku. Yeah. Thanks, Seedramon. No worries, man. Thanks, thanks, man. Okay, so one of the main reasons, you're probably, like, you're probably wondering, with Seedramon, like, why would you get that at such a slow recruitment if you don't get first try? Um, there's, it takes you across the Beetle Land where there's two recruitments. You literally just talk to you and you get them, and that's four prosperity points. So, including Seedramon, it's six total prosperity points, which you know, makes it so much worth it to do. And there's no fast recruitments that are good replacements. So, you just have to um, hope for the best. Okay, so, yeah, discipline is. Okay. Discipline's bad, so I'm gonna sit there and scold for a little bit before I do the manipulation here. Oh, he's gonna take forever. Okay, let's see if I can actually, like, feed something and have him not take it. Good. Yeah, it's absolutely the fastest way to do it. Okay. Don't take this. Oh, you suck. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, um... Good. That should be enough after this one. So this is going to be a new thing I've never actually tried before. Um, no happiness manipulation. <laughs> this is definitely going to be a new thing for me. So I'm saving the game here. And then I'll reset the console. So, as I said, because he has the tiredness bubble or the sleepy bubble above his head, he should be good to um, not advance the RNG while his happiness is so low. Normally, that's what happens. I've been wrong before, though. If it happens that way, I'll have to, like, I don't know, manipulate a happy mushroom feed or something. Fingers crossed. I think it will be okay. 
He doesn't seem to be. I don't think in this day he can actually get the um, butterfly, which will effectively lose all his stats. And that's the one reason that the RNG advances because it's trying to decide if he's um, going to get the butterfly, which is a you know a chance based on how much happiness you have. All right, so I'm gonna set this up. I'll hold R1 and upright, and I will kind of walk into the loading zone while the particle effects are happening around him, which will manipulate uh, Metal Mammon to spawn, which there he is. Cool, it worked. <laughs> That's good. The run can progress. Yeah, get some new hordes going, please. This is actually like quite a miracle. The run, the little run that could. Some, doing some time feeds here. Did I do enough feeds at the end? Okay, I'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> I don't know, I had this slight feeling I didn't. I think I was meant to feed another MP floppy at the end and I didn't do it. If anyone was ever curious why my estimate is 1 hour and 30 minutes when my run is at 109, this is exactly why. Because <laughs> I'm still going to beat it at this stage, probably. <laughs> if this works, I definitely will, but if... Um, yeah, if um, I didn't feed the items in uh, correctly, then it's I'm going to have to reset again and do Metal Memory more Manipulation all over again. That's fine, though. Like, it's not... Too much of a big deal, considering I still get to finish the run in the end. A run that really should have been dead a long time ago. <laughs> so we're visiting Unimon now. Um, if I'm on the correct RNG, I should be able to do two catch-ups to... Bakemon before entering the back out here, and then Mamemon will spawn. If I did it wrong, which there is a chance I did, I have to reset and go do Metal Mamemon again. That's two right there. There we go. Don't be there, don't be there, don't be there, don't be there. <sighs> so I was meant to feed one more MP floppy at the end. Sadly enough, this is. Completely my fault. I practiced slots a lot this like during the time I've been in Adelaide, and I didn't really touch the other stuff. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's tef that's definitely on me. So I guess I'm just gonna show that this is RNG, this is actually RNG manipulation of, of the exact same fight that I did just a moment ago. It's like, I guess that's all I can really say. So same setup as before, just go out, hold down left, or down right, and then feed nine and when the screen goes in. I'm glad that does confirm that if I have like zero happiness, I can still do some manipulation and it works fine.
Wait a second. Why am I doing more damage to him? Oh, cause... That's what it is. I have higher offense, so I'm doing an X less. Alright. That's it. <laughs> Hit the time, it's done. Alright, I'm doing curling now. Yeah, I have two high offense, so that means I missed a... There's one cycle less on... Um, on Metal Mammon, which changed the RNG, so I can't follow up the manipulation with Mammon as well. So yeah, unfortunately, that is the end. What a way to go. <laughs> Too strong, Digimon. Ends the run. <laughs> I don't know. I think I managed to do it. So I'll load the save game again, and I'll do curling, because, yeah, it's just unfortunate, but... She'll be wrong, mate. Yeah. Don't run this game for a marathon. Just don't do it. Run at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, this just in, I'm an IRL streamer now. <laughs> so, yeah, gonna do curling and get off the stage. <laughs> I hope I can kind of like redeem myself a little bit with like getting the um, grapple puck and just destroying Penguin Mon. And not get like owned entirely. All right, so this is curling. The end of the run. The final boss. Ah, so a, I heard a grapple go into the ground somewhere on it. What do we got? Those are terrible pucks. <laughs> Those are garbage. All right, let's do what we can with this then. Oh, there's one in the No. That's okay, he'll hit that. I was hoping there was like a grapple like already in the middle. If there is, you can usually just bounce off it and kind of sit there. Oh, okay, that's fine. Whatever, do that then. I'm gonna, I'm gonna completely own him and chuck him into bed. Yeah, that was a good shot, yeah. 10 out of 10 for me. Hey, I knocked him out, like, I'm doing alright. Hey, wait a second, what? No, that wasn't even in. What? How was that not in? That was like... That was definitely in the ring. I'm calling rigged on this game. What? Having a fun time. Yeah, you're right. He's just toying with me now. I'm an asshole. Uh, no, I'm not going to do that. I could maybe do this, though. That works out. Just kind of push him slightly more out of the ring so he doesn't get in. What is he doing, he's dude? Like trying to get the one yeah, he's trying to knock me into bad. And he's wrecking himself. Stop wrecking yourself. Yeah, yeah, I did good. In the delete area. Yeah, delete it. Delete, area. delete this park. <laughs> Alright, yeah, I need to get rid of that. Um, okay, this should be fine. I got one more, so I can kind of knock it out. This could end badly, yeah. This could kind of end badly, maybe. Alright, we're good. We got it. Yeah, right into bad, dude. Oh, no, there you go. Bad, this run. Safe. Winner, winner, we're done. We're gonna... <laughs> Yeah, it's still not my PV though. <laughs> I, I mercy, dude, I mercy killed at 110. <laughs>